Split in soccer, split in college football, split in the NBA. Sometimes that's the way it is. Now a 163, 138, and 10 overall run with free plays here on the Power 5. Jam-packed show for you on Thursday with college football, the NBA, and NFL. Got the Macho Man shirt on. Here we go. Number one, Syracuse, plus 5.5 at Pitt. One undefeated, Liberty, fell last night. Hope you caught the Power 5 and or the morning wager yesterday as you were told to take the points with Kennesaw State in that spot. What ended up being a stunning outright win, one of the biggest upsets of the college football season. So now there's only nine unbeaten teams left in college football. Number 19 Pitt is one of them. The Panthers are in action tonight, as I've said, hosting Syracuse. Here's the thing. Pitt may still be unbeaten, but I don't have them power rated as even a top five team in the ACC, let alone a top 25 team in the country. I had a couple fortunate wins early on in the season. Comebacks against Cincinnati, where they trailed by 21 in the fourth quarter, and West Virginia, where they trailed by double digits with just over three minutes to go. And the last time we saw the Panthers, they had to hold on for a two-point win at home versus Cal. I view this game with Syracuse pretty much as a coin flip. Could definitely see Pitt losing outright. Syracuse, who is outgaining the Panthers on a per-play basis this season, has quarterback Kyle McCord. What a start he's off to. Uh, the Cuse has already pulled off one upset on a weeknight game uh, this year. They go to UNLV and win. I'm taking the points with Syracuse in this one. The other college football game is Old Dominion versus Georgia Southern. I like Old Dominion on the money line here. A couple weeks ago, Georgia Southern pulled an incredibly memorable comeback win for me and my clients, rallying from a 23-3 fourth quarter deficit to win outright. 24-23 at home versus Marshall. Then last week, the Eagles did something even more impressive, in my opinion. They beat James Madison 28-14 as 10-point underdogs. Really, that game was not close at all. Georgia Southern outgained JMU 405-253 and led 21-0 at halftime. Only a minus-4 turnover differential for Georgia Southern kept things interesting. But here's the thing. Okay, we love that they won for us two weeks ago against Marshall. We were impressed what they did against James Madison. But each of those two games were in Statesboro. Now Georgia Southern goes on the road, and I could see him losing in Norfolk to Old Dominion, who has wins over Bowling Green and Texas State this year. Those are two good G5 wins. The Monarchs made a quarterback change a couple weeks ago. That's led to better results. We can simply play them on the money line here, and I think Georgia Southern's going to run out of gas after the last two weeks. This is a big game. For first place in the Sun Belt's East Division. Yes, this is the one conference that still does divisions. I look for the home team to emerge victorious, and that is ODU. Let's go to the NBA now. Call me crazy. I'm sure you just said it. And if you haven't, now you're going to. I'm taking the Wizards plus 13 and a half against the Celtics. No way we get a repeat of what we saw from Boston on opening night as they tied an NBA record with 29 made three-pointers in a 132-109 route of the Knicks. It was one of the greatest shooting displays in a single game in NBA history. A little regression, perhaps? Uh, I know Washington's going to be terrible this season, okay? I'm, uh, again, everyone knows that, okay? But check this out. Teams playing their season opener against an opponent that has already played at least one game on an 11-3 ATS run since 2016, including a perfect 6-0 against the spread, the last two seasons. Just going to follow the trend and take what is the fifth double-digit home underdog in a home opener over the last 30 years. Yes, that is how little respect the Wizards are being shown here. They are just the fifth double-digit home dog uh, in a season opener the last 30 years in the NBA. That 6-0 ATS trend I just mentioned also applies to Minnesota at Sacramento tonight. The T-Wolves, they lost on opening night 110-103. to 103 to the Lakers, struggled offensively. Julius Randle and Dante DiVincenzo, who came over from the Knicks in the Carl Anthony Towns trade, did combine for 26 points, but they did so on just 8 of 21 shooting, including 3 of 11 from three-point range. I think the T-Wolves are going to be a public side in this matchup. To that point, the line has already jumped the fence. We can now grab the Kings, who, yes, are playing their season opener uh, at plus 1.5 now. They're, they're a home dog, a slight home dog. I expect the Kings to win this game again. 6-0 ATS run last two seasons for teams playing their first game against an opponent that has already played once. Finally, we've got the NFL on Thursday. It's Vikings-Rams. I'm going to tease the Rams up to plus 9 in this spot. The Vikings, a surprise at 5-1, and one, just suffered their first straight-up loss of the season Sunday. 29-28 at home to Detroit. Now hit the road on a short week. 
Interesting tidbit here. Teams are 0-4 ATS the week after facing the Lions this season. I think uh, we should keep monitoring that. Maybe playing the Lions, Dan Campbell's team uh, takes a little bit out of you. Here, the Vikings face a Rams team that's getting healthier. Wide receiver Cooper Cup returns tonight. And head coach Sean McVay, okay, has been outstanding in prime time when on short rest. He's 6-0 ATS in that situation since 2019. I know it was a struggle to get by the lowly Raiders last week, but the Rams are better than their record, all right? I think we can all agree on that. And remember, it was the Rams, not the Vikings, that was that were a playoff team last year. I think at home, the Rams can certainly keep this within one possession. Remember, we're teasing them here. The question then becomes, who do we tease for the second leg? This is a little non-traditional. They say, don't tease road favorites down, but I'm not going to listen to uh, to that advice. Let's tease the Jets down to minus one on Sunday at the Patriots. If the Jets don't win this game, then Aaron Rodgers should just retire, okay? Let's not sugarcoat it one iota, all right? The Jets had no problem winning the first meeting with the Patriots, 24-3. That was a Thursday night game. And the Patriots seem even worse now. An embattled first-year head coach that may have lost the locker room. So I expect the Jets to win Sunday uh, by more than a point. It's going to be the Rams plus nine, Jets minus one as a teaser. Let us go ahead and recap today's Power Five, shall we? Number one, Syracuse plus five and a half at Pitt. Number two, Old Dominion money line versus Georgia Southern. Number three, as we move to the NBA, Wizards plus 13 and a half uh, at home versus the Celtics. Hold your nose on that one. Number four. Sacramento plus one and a half versus Minnesota, also in the NBA. And then in the NFL, we're doing a teaser for Thursday involving Thursday night football. Rams up to plus nine. Jets down to minus one. Again, you can comment down below with your thoughts and questions on those plays. Let me know what you are betting on Thursday as well. I'm always interested to see that. Your comments keep the show going fresh and uh, exciting for me. Uh, I've already got three college football plays locked and loaded for Saturday at wagertalk.com. Uh, as a reminder, I am number one in college football this season thanks to a current white hot 12 and 2 run. I know a lot of you say, oh, how can everyone be number one? Look, here's the bottom line. I have, since the start of the season, the best college football record at Wager Talk. Okay, best overall record. Just that's what it is. And in NFL, I'm going to have a five, I'm doing pretty well uh, as well. Uh, I, I'm going to have a 5% max bet in the NFL on Sunday. So far, I have released just two 5% plays this entire football season. One was in college, Texas Tech over Arizona State, a winner. The lone NFL max bet was the Broncos crushing the Raiders a few weeks ago. You can get everything I release for the next 30 days for just over $8 per day by going to my page right now, wt.buzz slash bp, where a 30-day all-access pass has been discounted to $249. And this is the time of year you really want to have a 30-day all-access pass, guys, because you get all my NFL, all my top-ranked college football, all my NBA, all my soccer, even college hoops, when that gets underway in just a few weeks. The 5% play that I'm going to have Sunday, it costs you $35. You might as well get 30 days for just $200 more, just over $200 more. WT.buzz slash BP is the place to go. That does it for the Thursday edition of the Power 5. Smash that like button if you enjoyed it. Also, make sure you're subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel. And until next time, guys, let's catch some tickets.